It's an illustration to make a point, and we're supposed to be compacted together, and we all form a body, a structure, which is the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So a church is not a building. And, and even though, like Pastor says, when, you know, when we say we're going to church, really what we're doing, we're going to fellowship. fellowship. Amen? Yeah. We're going to fellowship with the church. We are the church. Amen? Amen. Number 11. The church is God's instrument to carry out what? Great commission. Great commission. The church is God's instrument to carry out the great commission. We can't get around it. That, you want to talk about purpose, where your purpose is? You, one of the things I think that, as I recall in engineering, one of the things they said was you start from the general and work your way to the specific. You start when you're addressing a problem. You start from the general laws. You know, matter, energy, E equals mc squared. Force, force equals mass times acceleration. You know, what are we dealing with? What general physical principle, are we dealing with enthalpy, are we dealing with the fact that heat, like this air conditioner right here, heat uh, rises, and that heat is always, or energy is always being expended in the universe, are we dealing with that? What general principle are we dealing with when we attack a problem? And so that's what they trained us in engineering, being a science, right? And that's the same thing here. When you deal with the Bible and God, you need to deal with the general principle first for your life, the general purpose for your life. And Jesus laid it out. He laid it out. Here's what he said. The commission, right? Amen? Yes. Number 11 should be the commission. Do you have that? Yes. The church is God's instrument to carry out the great commission in the earth. Go and preach the word, right, to every creature, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching, discipling, it's, it's, that is what we, that is our purpose in the earth, this earth. That is the purpose of your life as a foundation. Now, with that, what you, what, what you do and what you add on to that, as we're being taught in this ministry, your profession. Your, but even then, your purpose is, should be infused in everything. You hear, what I'm, hear what I'm saying? Everything that you're doing. That's what God is showing me. Everything, and I believe that's what Pastor has been preaching. Is I'm trying to list, catch the spirit of what he's saying. Everything that you're doing, your purpose, your when you're going on vacation, when you yes, you're relaxing or whatever. But someone comes along and the spirit moves mm -hmm. on you. How you doing? God mm -hmm. bless you. You know whatever. Engage in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Here's a funny thing. <laughs> I remember um, in a couple of other churches, people say, "Well, you know what? I'm not really good with witness. I'm not a." I'm not an outgoing person. I'm, I'm shy. I don't like to witness. I don't like to witness. I don't, I don't want, I don't, you know, that's not my thing. I'll, I'll stay here at the church. Mm -hmm. See, there, there you go again. The church, in the church building. Mm -hmm. And I'll do this or that. I don't really want to go witnessing. I don't do that. I, me and witnessing, we don't, we don't do. And here, watch this, though. So they, they're driving a nice Lexus, right? And, uh, they park in front of the house. They come out the next day, early in the morning, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning. Their Lexus gets hit. Boom. Okay, okay. They come out there and they say, Who hit my Lexus? <laughs> Go up and down the block. Okay. Did you see so and so hit my Lexus? Did you see that? Did you see somebody hit my I look, I live right down here and I got a gold Lexus. And somebody hit my Lexus. Okay. Now I need to, what's your name? Where were you at? <laughs> Be all up in somebody's grill. <laughs> talking like it's like it's nothing. Yes. Come on now. Oh, but no, I don't want to, I can't. Not for the Lord, I can't. Okay. You see, okay. we, will see witness, we will do what's important to us. Yes. We will do. One of the things that I, that I it was funny about uh, going to Howard, after I, and you know, I have a prodigal story that I've shared with some of y'all that were in the Bible study heard me teach the last time. One of the things I remembered is that um, uh, after I got saved, after I got a Bible from this dear sister here, Sister Camille, and I, and I kept reading it and, and got saved, I uh, joined Campus Group Saved for Christ. Bill Bright was an organizer. I think he's still alive. Great organization. Great work. 
getting on campuses and, and, and uh, get, perfecting Christian leaders, you know, young people, college people, to have uh, Bible study and, and worship service during the week on campus, that is powerful. That yes. man is blessed, yes. hear me. Yes. And I thank God for him because, hey, but for him, I probably wouldn't be, I mean, I know it was the Holy Ghost working through it, but I'm saying that was a fundamental addition to my early Christian life. When I really needed something grounded, that really was kind of like my church when I first got saved. One of the first things, now listen to how they, you talk about baptism by fire, listen to what they did. One of the first things the campus group saved for Christ told us is they said, look, now that you're saved, you need to go and act, just what we were talking about, you need to go and act like it, right? They said, no, all the dorm rooms and stuff where you used to party and do all that other stuff, you know, you been in the room. They said, you go right on back there and you go tell them the love of Jesus Christ has saved your life. You're all like, what? <laughs> but you know what, though? Hey, did you see? Hey, they weren't taking nothing out. They didn't, they didn't create that. Look at Paul the Apostle. The people didn't even want to talk to Paul. They didn't want to talk because they thought he was going to come back and kill them. Then it was a trap. But God sent him right back to the same people he was persecuting. You see that? So God, there are people sometimes in our lives that God, I talked to a frat brother, uh, frat brother on the phone the other day. Well, we were at the, speaking of evangelism, we were out there. Brother Cap was out there. Sister Yogi was selling her goods. But I'm sure she got a shout out there. And uh, Sister Marlena was out there and uh, uh, several others. We were evangelizing, passing out flyers. Let be, I mean, thousands of people at Anderson Park. Yes. Let them know about the word of God. Let them know the truth and love is here. We passed out probably, how many flyers did we pass out by the county? Over 500. Over 500, Sister Marlene? Yes. 500 flyers. I mean, they were. I came up there. I was running late. And they had already passed. And Sister Dorothy, Sister Keita was out there, Brother Richard. I mean, Sister Martha. It was amazing. It was just um, Jesus said the field is already white with Did harvest. I say yeah. Yes, sister. My I yesterday my I was a, that was a part I wanted to be. Oh. But my son had bought a home. Oh, bless you, bless you. And it was his open house. Bless family. you, bless you. But him. I had told him, don't worry about coming where I'm at, you all, because he's simple. Yeah. I mean, he's simple. Go out there. Yeah, yeah. And Nick was calling me to tell me you all was out there. Yes, yes. There's yes. a lady out there named Barbara Morris, the singer. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's my friend. That's fine. Yes, amen. She knows. Yeah, okay, she knows. okay. You all was there. Amen, she amen. Knows. See that? But see the, the blessing. Was there. That's a blessing. The was there, and it was shared. That's a blessing. It was shared, you all. That's a blessing. See? Yeah. yeah. Says, Come on, can't you get on over here? I said, can't leave. But I'm glad to know you. See, see that? And that goes back to that's right, mother. And that goes back to what I said about living stone. See, with that, but and that goes back to what Pastor was saying. All of us, even in the world, y'all, they know. I work. I work for BP right now. They know that if I get sick, they have a backup. Yes. See, we we need to be wise. We can't. And my whole point about talking about campus crusade for Christ was to give you the point of <clears throat> you cannot once you become a Christian you cannot now take all of your passion and your energy that you had in the world that you gave to the devil and your wisdom that you used in the world there are some things that you you learned in the world that were really you used it for the devil but that wisdom came from the Lord yeah. you might not have been saved yeah. you hear what I'm saying mm -hmm. if you were keeping your finances in order, you don't drop that when you become a Christian. Right. If you have, if you never spoke a lie to anybody when you were in the world, you don't drop that when you become right. a Christian. What you do is you recognize that that comes from the Lord. Right. That's that's the difference. Amen. And that was my point about the Lexus. <laughs> when you're in the world, you're concerned about your world and your earthly things and, and what have you. And yes, and even in, in, in when we become in Christ, we should keep our things neat and, and you know do our best. Not at the sake of disobeying God, but we should do that. You know what I'm saying? My point is, is that we, we, sometimes what happens, particularly in the American church, is when we come in to the church, we lay down all of the passion, all of our expertise, and all of everything. No, God wants to use that stuff. And that's why Campus Crusade for Christ said that. They said, you used to party or whatever. 
Okay, you used to walk down from, from door to door looking for trouble, feet, you know, wicked feet looking for something. Mm -hmm. to, you used to do that in the world. So, okay, now you got, now how beautiful are the feet of those who share the gospel. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, let's make sure you fully clothed in Ephesians 6, you know, having mm -hmm. shot your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. See, do you see the difference? Now you use your, those same feet, that same hand that knocked on that door, now you use it to go and say, hey, so and so. And then they, <laughs> People say, hey man, what's up? Yeah, you coming to party? You come, you coming on in the party with us? Come on in. No, brother, look, man, I, I'm coming right to now. share. They were, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the whole. That's the witness. That's the power. Of the inside, the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all. We gotta do it, cause God said He wants His kingdom to be spread everywhere. And that's that's what we're talking about right here. We are an instrument in number eleven to carry out the Great Commission. Number twelve. The next major event in God's prophetical program is the rapture. rapture. We're going to wrap this up with the rapture. The rapture, by rightly dividing the word, let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4. Everybody have your Bible? to have a Bible study at uh, when I worked at Nissan North America and we focused a lot on this scripture and it was really good. There was a, another gentleman that was hosting it. I had one at one time with one person but another gentleman was hosting this one. We really looked at this scripture and it really solidified for me what's happening. There's a lot of confusion uh, and for good reason in the church uh, about the rapture. But the Bible and, and the theologians go back and for it to say, well, no, it's this, and it's going to happen here. <clears throat> a lot of people will come in and say, but there is no word rapture in the Bible. Reading in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. Brother Cap, you mind reading for us? 11. 4, 4, and yeah, let's see. 13. 13. 13, sorry. 13. Coming of the Lord. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant and about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we will tell you that, that we who are still alive here are left until the coming of the Lord will fall asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven and with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with mm -hmm. the trumpet call of God and the, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Right. Mm -hmm. After that, we after that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together and caught up with them mm -hmm. in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Okay. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Always we'll with the Lord. Yes. Each other with these words. There you go. Eighteen. Always comfort comfort one another. Mm -hmm. Therefore, comfort one another. So we just we just <laughs> obey the scripture right now. We just comfort one another with these words. Amen? Amen. And those words are those who remain, who are alive and remain, will be caught up. You know, the Bible was translated uh, from several different languages to our English today. And, it, and the word uh, rapture, I believe it is, is a Latin word. And that's what that caught up is right there. It comes from the Latin word, rapture. And I think if you uh, study it out, it also comes from the word that we give to birds of prey. Oftentimes the Bible refers to angels as eagles. In Matthew 24, um, it talks about, and then where the bodies are, the carcass are, the eagles will be gathered. It talks about it there. But right here, just looking at this scripture, what you need to realize is that rapture or raptor is, is the, you know, is what they usually call uh, a bird of prey. But rapture, which would be, we will be caught up here, rapture, is the word. We will be caught up. So that's supposed to happen. The key is, is that what you need to understand is this. Towards the end, when all the signs start coming in, we're seeing them ourselves. What's going to happen is, Jesus is not going to touch the earth at first. He's going to come for the Gentile church. This is the distinction. 